Welcome back to Quantitative Reasoning. In tutorial 26, we learned that we can generate normally distributed random numbers with the R function R norm. Mathematically speaking, normally distributed random numbers can have infinitely many different values between minus infinity and plus infinity. If we want to generate random numbers from a finite set of objects, we need a different R function, sample. In this tutorial, we explore different ways of sampling. We learn how to create a random permutation of elements in a vector. We'll find out how we sample elements in a vector with and without replacement. We'll also learn how to sample elements with unequal probabilities. The sample function needs at least one argument, a vector. If the argument contains two or more elements, then sample returns a vector that contains a random permutation of the input elements. Here's an example where the input is a vector with the numbers 5, 6, 1, 6 and 3. Because the permutation is random, your result is likely to differ from mine. We get yet another permutation when we run the command a second time. The sample function can also accept non-numeric input. Here's an example where the input is a character vector. If the input is a single non-numeric element or a single number less than 1, sample returns this element. If the input is a number x greater than or equal to 1, we might expect that the return value is only the number x. Alas, this case is an exception. Instead of returning only x, sample returns a permutation of the integers from 1 to x. This exception can be a source of bugs. There's a warning in the documentation. Note that this convenience feature may lead to undesired behavior when x is of varying length in calls such as sample in parentheses x. In this course, we won't have input of varying length, but it's still important to be aware of the sample function's quirky behavior to avoid bad surprises. Random permutations have applications in permutation tests, which we cover later in this course. More frequently, we don't need a complete permutation of all elements, but only a few random elements from a vector. For example, we may need to select two random students to work together on a project. We generate random samples of size 2 by passing a second argument to the sample function. Size equals 2. When we use this command, it's guaranteed that the two returned names are different. This type of sampling is called sampling without replacement. We can think of it as the equivalent of the following real-world experiment. We write the students' names on name cards, put the cards into a hat, and we randomly draw two cards from the hat. After we draw the first card, we keep it outside the hat, so that the second card cannot be a repeat of the first card. If we keep drawing more and more cards without replacement, eventually there will be no cards left in the hat. If the number of draws exceeds the number of elements we can draw, R throws an error. Here is what happens if we try to create a random team of six students if there are only five students to sample from. R complains that it cannot take a sample larger than the population when replace equals false. Sampling without replacement is the proper procedure if we don't want repeating elements, but there are real-world scenarios in which elements can repeat. For example, when we roll two dice, it's possible that both numbers are equal. An equivalent random experiment is to put cards with the numbers from 1 to 6 in a hat, draw one card randomly, put the card back in the hat, and make a second random draw from all six cards. This kind of sampling is called sampling with replacement. We can instruct R to perform sampling with replacement by passing the argument replace equals true to the sample function. Here is how we simulate rolling two dice. Sample, in parentheses, 6, comma, size equals 2, comma, replace equals true. If we repeat this command several times, we'll sooner or later obtain a return value with two equal numbers. So far, we assume that all elements in the vector are sampled with equal probability. In many real-world scenarios, outcomes occur with unequal probabilities. For example, if we flip a bent coin, heads and tails have different probabilities. We can instruct R to sample with unequal probabilities by passing the additional argument prob to the sample function. 
Here is how we simulate 20 flips of a coin that shows heads with probability 0.75 and tails with probability 0.25. Sample in parentheses C in parentheses in quotes H comma T comma size equals 20 comma replace equals true comma prob equals C in parentheses 0.75 comma 0.25. Because we sample with replacement, we can set the size equal to a number that is greater than the number of elements in the first argument. The elements in the prop vector must not be negative, and at least one of them must be positive, but they need not sum to 1. If the odds of getting heads from a coin flip is 3 to 1, we can put these odds directly into the prop vector. Prop equals C 3 comma 1. This command is equivalent to our earlier version with prob equals c 0.75,0.25. If the values in prob don't sum to 1, r normalizes them behind the scenes, that is, r divides each value by the sum of all prob elements to generate a proper probability distribution. This feature can occasionally be useful. Perhaps you are still skeptical whether r really would have produced the same coin flips if I had used prop equals c 0.75, 0.25 instead of prop equals c 3,1. Our first sequence of coin flips isn't identical with the second sequence. One might simply shrug and blame this fact on the nature of randomness. It's unlikely that a sequence of 20 coin flips would be repeated exactly in two independent random experiments. However, there is a way to retrieve past sequences of computer-generated random numbers without having to save them in memory. Next time, I use this feature to demonstrate that prob equals c 0.75,0.25 and prob equals c 3,1 really produce identical sequences. Let's recap what we learned about the sample function. Sample in parentheses x creates a random permutation of the elements in the vector x. There's one exception to this rule. If x is a single number greater than 1, sample in parentheses x returns a permutation of the integers between 1 and x. We sample k elements from x without replacement by using the command sample in parentheses x comma size equals k. If we want to sample k elements with replacement, we need to add the argument replace equals true. By default, all elements in X are sampled with equal probability. If we want to sample them with different probabilities, we pass the probabilities as additional argument prob to the sample function. Next time, we learn how we can reproduce the same random numbers if we run an R script a second time. See you soon.